service this morning begins on page 148 in the Book of Common Prayer. In lieu of a opening hymn, we will be sharing the great litany. God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy. God the Son, redeemer of the world, O oh God, the Holy Ghost, sanctifier of the faithful, have mercy upon us. O oh holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, one God, have mercy upon us. Remember not, Lord, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forefathers. Neither reward us according to our sins. Spare us, good Lord. Spare thy people, whom thou hast redeemed with thy most precious blood. Mercy, preserve us forever. From all evil and wickedness, from sin, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, and from everlasting damnation, good Lord, deliver us. From all blindness of heart, from pride, vainglory, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all want of charity, good Lord, deliver us. From all inordinate and sinful affections, and from all the deceits of the world, the flesh and the devil, good Lord, deliver us. From all false doctrine, heresy, and schism, from hardness of heart and contempt of word and commandment, good Lord, deliver us. From lightning and tempest, from earthquake, fire, and flood, from plague, pestilence, and famine, good Lord, deliver us. From all oppression, conspiracy, and rebellion, from violence, battle, and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of the Holy Incarnation, by thy holy nativity and submission to the law, by thy baptism, fasting, and temptation, good Lord, deliver us. From thine agony and bloody sweat, by thy cross and passion, by thy precious death and burial, by thy glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Ghost, good Lord, deliver us. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, good Lord, deliver us. We sinners do beseech thee to hear us, O Lord God, and that it may please thee to rule and govern thy holy church. Universal is the right way. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord that it may please thee to illumine all bishops, priests, and deacons with true knowledge and understanding of thy word, and that both by their preaching and living they may set forth and show it accordingly. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to bless and keep all thy people. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to send forth laborers into the harvest, and to draw all mankind into thy kingdom, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give all people increase of grace, to hear and receive thy word, and to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to bring into the way of truth all such as have erred and are deceived, we beseech thee to hear us, O Lord that we may please thee to give us a heart of love and fear and diligently to live after thy commandments. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to rule the hearts of thy servants, the President of the United States, and all others in authority, that they may do justice and love mercy and walk in the ways of truth. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to make wars to cease in all the world, to give to all nations unity, peace, and concord, and to bestow freedom upon all peoples. 
we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to show thy pity upon all prisoners and captives, the homeless and the hungry, and all who are desolate and oppressed. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give and preserve to our use the bountiful fruits of the earth, so that in due time all may enjoy them. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to inspire us in several callings, to do the work that thou givest to do with singleness of heart as thy servants, and for the common good. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to persevere all or preserve all who are in danger by reason of their labor or their travel. We beseech thee to hear us. That it may please thee to preserve and provide for all women in childbirth, young women and orphans, the widowed, and all whose names are broken or torn by strife. We beseech thee to hear us. That it may please thee to visit the lonely, to strengthen all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, and to comfort with thy presence those who are failing and infirm. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to support, help, and comfort all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to have mercy on all mankind. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give us true repentance, to forgive all our sins, negligences, and ignorances, and to endue with us with the grace of thy Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to thy holy word. That it may please thee to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. We beseech thee, O God. That it may please thee to strengthen such as to do stand, to comfort and help the weak-hearted, to raise up those who fall, and finally to beat down Satan under their feet. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to grant to all the faithful departed eternal life and peace. We beseech thee to hear us. That it may please thee to grant that in the fellowship of all the saints, we may attain to thy heavenly kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, Almighty God, who has promised to hear the petitions of all those who ask in thy Son's name, we beseech thee mercifully to incline thine ear to us, who have now made our prayers and supplications unto thee, and grant that those things which we have asked faithfully according to thy will may be obtained effectually, to the relief of our necessity and the setting forth of thy glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of God's holy word. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit in the ground, which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. 
he went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power, and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and your house. The word of the Lord. Today's psalm is psalm number 91, verses 1 through 2 and 9 through 16, found in your bulletin or in your Book of Common Prayer, page 719. We will read it in unison. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold. Because my trust because you have made the Lord your refuge and the most high your habitation there shall no evil happen to you neither shall any plague come near your dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways they shall bear you in their hands lest you dash your foot against the stone you shall tread upon the lion and adder. You shall trample the young lion and the serpent under your feet. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore we, I will protect him because he knows my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to honor. With the long life will satisfy him and show him my salvation. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips, that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Our sequence hymn is hymn number 707, found in the blue 1982 hymnal. Please stand.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After his baptism, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in instant all the, kings of the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please, if, if you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, <clears throat> If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command His angels concerning you to protect you. And on their hands they will bear you up, so that your, you will not dash your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. So last Thursday, as I walked into Panera to enjoy my Thursday morning cup of coffee and to begin this week's message, one of the regulars there stopped me and asked, how was I feeling after the long Ash Wednesday? I said, tired, but blessed. Then they asked me, so what are you giving up for Lent? My answer surprised them. I said, nothing. And they just kind of looked at me. And I said, instead of giving up something that I fully expect to re-embrace after Easter, I plan on taking time each day to sit in the quiet, in the silence, so that I may rest in the quietness of God. They looked at me and it was okay. You see, this has been a practice for me over the years, and, and it was one I once did with great diligence. But the craziness of parish life has broken me of this discipline of intentional prayer. Prayer in my life has become something that I did as I was needed, as it was needed. And it's quite oftenly needed. And it's almost exclusively become one-sided. Me asking God for help, guidance, or grace for someone who is in need. After spending that day in silence on the retreat, I realized how much I missed taking time to simply sit and listen. Don't get me wrong. I, it isn't that I haven't been listening to you when you come to me with your prayers. But it's be listening as much to God. In some way, my prayer life has become more like going to the doctor, telling them all the things that are bothering me, and then getting up from the to leave before ever waiting to hear the doctor's response. 
trusting in their wisdom to provide whatever it is I needed. The quiet I found on retreat in the silence that was created reminded me of just how important it is to let go of the craziness around us. If even for only a few minutes, we need that silence in our lives. We need that peace in order to find that which comes, that peace which comes when we sense God, His presence in our lives. Knowing how much this practice has meant to me over the years, especially when, as I said when I took the time to do it, is why in the flame this month, I suggested that this Lent, we all try to create a silence in the craziness of our life. By sitting and listening, focusing our attention on nothing other than the quietness of the moment, so that we might know the peace and assurance of God's love that that surrounds us. If someone has never done this before, it can be a hard practice to begin. Because the sounds of silence can be deafening. While we may silence worldly distractions, our minds continue to bombard with distraction after distraction. There's a simple breathing exercise that can help slow this constant barrage that seeks to invade our silence. And I'd like us to take a moment to try it. I invite each of us to put our feet flat on the floor, sit comfortably. Now, close your eyes. And ready for this? Breathe. In and out. In and out. You may open your eyes. Now, if you do this for a few moments, minutes, excuse me, listening to nothing but your breathing, you would notice that those constant distractions breaking into the silence would begin to come at you slower and slower. This prayer practice is commonly referred to as centering prayer. Its goal is to set aside all the distractions in our life so that we might make room for God's love, grace, and mercy to be at the center of our being. One warning about this style of prayer. If we sit listening to nothing but our breathing, we might fall asleep. It can be restful. And, and that's okay. That would be a sign of God's peace being made manifest in our lives. So I would suggest you set a timer just in case. The timer also helps us to know that, especially in those early struggles with this form of prayer, that the uncomfortableness of silence doesn't go on forever. Following his baptism, entering into the wilderness, Jesus created a silence, similar to the one we try to create in centering prayer, so that he may hear, may know the closeness of God. Like all those distractions that seek to invade our silence, 
In today's gospel, we learn that Satan sought to invade his as well. Something Jesus does when Satan's distractions can no longer be ignored can help us in the times when our distractions seem to be overwhelming. Jesus silenced the noise with Scripture. Now, I'll be honest. We may not, like Jesus, be able to quote the exact scriptural verse we need to counter what confronts us. But we re can respond with a very simple phrase that I believe sums up the story Scripture tells us. It even works with our breath prayer. That phrase? God's love. Let's take a moment and try it. As we, breathe, as we slowly breathe in, say to yourself, God. Oh. God. Love. Is love. When God's love or the acknowledgement that God is love is our focus, all else can be slowly shoved to the side. We, like Jesus, can then face anything before us, be it temptation, grief, trouble. And in the good times in our lives, it is something that can bring us great joy. As we give thanks in response to the peace, the closeness of God affords. While such peace can really be relaxing. Remember, I said you could fall asleep. It could also be very invigorating. Pushing away those distractions, we are more able to clearly see, hear, and know what it is God is asking of each of us. About 10 years ago, during Lent, we asked the question, why are we here? Why is Church of Holy Spirit here on the corner of Virginia and Thomas, or Victoria and Thomas? Thank you. Here in Bellevue. What is it God intends for us to be or do for the surrounding community? Some may remember that during our Lent program, we even brought in outside agencies to talk about some of the community needs. And out of that season of prayer, we actually reshaped our outreach ministry. Changing our focus from what we had done for so long to what was more needed in the present. We faithfully have journeyed down that path, impacting the lives of so many. But it is time. It is time for us to ask that question again. The world has changed in 10 years, and so have we. Our purpose as a church is still the same. To share the love of God we know in our lives and in community with those around us so that they might be drawn into a relationship with the source of love, God. While the why doesn't change, how, how we go about it does and always will, partly because we change. We grow older, hopefully wiser. New people bring new ideas. Our abilities as a community shift, just as the needs of the community around us shift as well. Those needs can come at us 
like the distractions threatening our silence. One after another. Some welcomed, not. Just as the breathing exercise helps us to slow down these distractions in prayer, Lent gives us an opportunity to slow down in life as well. Giving us time to reflect not only on our, the health of our relationships with God and one another, but also how we go about being or doing that which God desires of us, both as individuals and as a community. As we prepare to create times of silence in our own lives this week, I would like to invite all of us to begin by asking how we currently how we might, as individuals, help someone know the love of God in our worship. To write down those first ideas that come to mind so that they're not distractions in the time we set aside in our silence. And thereby allowing us to open our hearts and our minds to what God may make known in the quietness silence affords. Now don't lose that list, folks. <laughs> In fact, add to it during, especially something that may come out of that silence. Then next week, bring your list and we'll have a couple of drop boxes out there. Just drop them in. You can sign your list or not. It really doesn't matter. I suspect we'll find that Many of us are doing something already. What I'm excited for is what the Spirit inspires us to consider doing in the midst of the changing world around us. And I pray that it excites you as well. Amen. Continuing on page 326 in the Book of Common Prayer, please stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. 
almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. Receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Scott, our bishop, Tom, our priest, Terry, our aspirate for the diaconate, that they may inspire and equip us to plan and work and pray for the growth of the church. Grant that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving me in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially President Joe Biden, the governor of the state, Pete Ricketts, and the elected officials of our individual communities, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that, rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor those who are ill, shut in, hospitalized, or recovering, especially Trig A, Mary R, Deanna C, Marilyn B, D, Chris W, Aaron, Paige B. Are there others? And for those with special concerns, especially the Crawford family, the Patrick family, the Gray family, the Schlitzer family. Are there others? And all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We ask that you be with the poor and oppressed, the unemployed and destitute, especially those who are hungry, cold, and in need of our help. Those imprisoned or held captive, especially those who struggle to survive. And all those who in this life face danger, violence, oppression, or degradation of any kind. We ask you to watch over all the members of our armed forces, especially those who are deployed. Sarah F., Jonathan P., are there others? and all their families until they are once again reunited in peace. We ask also that you protect all those who are traveling and can not be with us today. Are there any? In the Anglican cycle of prayer, pray the Anglican Church of Korea in the, in the diocesan cycle of prayer, St. Mary's, Nebraska City, members of the Standing Committee and Commission on Ministry. In the DR, the Holy Name Church, the Grand Commission Church, St. Gabriel Church. In the Parish Cycle of Prayer, pray for our bell choir, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. 
We give thanks for those who are celebrating birthdays this week, especially Judy D. Are there others? Those who are celebrating anniversaries this week, are there any? And for those people and occasions that you name at this time. We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in faith and fear, especially Gary G. Are there any others? Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartedly sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy holy sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever after serve and please the newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to the end, that all who believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And if anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. Almighty God, whose will it is to hold both heaven and earth in the peace of the kingdom, give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. All this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God. Our offertory hymn is hymn number 142, am I correct? 150, excuse me, 150, found in the blue 1982 hymnal.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Our service today is Eucharistic Rite or Prayer 1, found on page 333 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right and so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, According to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto him most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech you, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receive them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, Mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseeching thee, that we and all others who shall be partakers of this Holy Communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God. For the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
continuing on page 339 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. And may the peace that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. First off, I'd like to thank everybody who made last night's Celebration of Life service such a blessing for the family. Um, we had a lot of volunteers. We had a lot of people and it was just a, a wonderful blessing thank you and for those of you who were here last night and came back this morning thank you <laughs> i was worried how empty the pews would be <laughs> but it's it's great to see us today all right tonight our lenten soup supper starts okay <clears throat> it will begin at 5 p.m dinner will begin at 5 p.m we'll wrap up dinner at about 5 30 get some cleanup and start our uh, Lent program, Taste and See, beginning at 545. Uh, there's a little activity we will do. We'll watch a video. We'll have some discussion. Uh, we will close the night with Compline, and our goal is to be complete by 7 p.m. so that you can do other things in the evening as you need to. Today also starts our in-gathering for Friends of Tomorrow. Um, as you know, we do an annual in gathering of supplies. If you will take, take your bulletin with you, please note that. If you are in a store and you, you see something here that you would feel called to, to get, please bring it. Um, I forgot to get the baskets out this morning. I don't know if anybody got them out between services, but I will get them out when I get downstairs and they will be there next week. Next week, we will do an in gathering of whatever we have. It'll be blessed and we will get it up to uh, the Friends of Tomorrow Pantry. Um, if you would rather make a uh, donation in lieu of shopping, please make sure to put in the memo line of your check tomorrow, okay? That way we can make sure that the funds get to them so that they can buy in bulk something that they need as well. Something that happens next week that only happens twice a year. We set our clocks forward right we spring forward and fall back which means we do we gain an hour or lose an hour of sleep so what happens if you don't set your clock you'll be late for church so please remember saturday night when you go to bed reset your clocks um and i will do the best i can to do the same um and the other thing I would like to point out, coming forward, we have the DOK Day of Prayer. This event is not just for Daughters of the King. It, it, it's open, they've opened it up to the wider Omaha Daughters Ministry, but it is also for members of our own parish who wish to participate. If you have never seen the 27-foot labyrinth that we set up in the parish hall, it is a sight to be seen. I encourage you, take some time between 10 and 2 on the 19th, Stop by. If you've never walked a labyrinth before, you've never seen one before, the daughters will be here to more than glad to help you understand um, 
how it is a prayer tool. Um, and I have seen people take 20, 30 minutes to walk the labyrinth. I've also seen some in our youth group get done in five, but we aren't going to go there. <laughs> it is a wonderful prayer assistant prayer tool. Um, it's great to have. If you're not into walking the labyrinth, you can always go and, and pray, meditate in the chapel. We'll have that all set up. So please join us. We do have a birthday girl here today. Are there any other birthdays? She just went downstairs. Chris, how could she do that? Oh, well, we're going to say a, we're going to say a prayer for her anyway because she can hear it downstairs. Would you please join me in the birthday prayer? Are there any other birthdays or anniversaries that didn't make it into bulletin? Let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on this your servant as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And happy birthday to Judy. Please wish her a happy birthday when you see her downstairs. Our closing hymn today is hymn number 690, found in the blue 1982 hymnal. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.